Hi everybody, here's a little video on how to graph functional analyses in Excel. Now this is a template, so it's already been set up for you guys, but if you wanted to create one of these graphs on your own, then just make sure that you format it like we have done in previous videos. So everything is black and white, you have all the components that you need to for an ABA graph, no grid lines, your participant name is right here, and just all those components that we talked about previously. Uh, make sure that you go in and you do on your own, but they've already been done for you in this template, so you don't have to worry about it. And this is set up for a traditional functional analysis. So if you guys remember in the functional analysis video, we had five conditions, or we talked about five conditions, and these are just the typical five conditions that you would have in a functional analysis. So we have the attention condition, which assesses the attention function, the demand condition, which assesses the escape function, and a loan condition, which assesses the sensory function, and a tangible condition, which assesses the tangible function. And then we have our play condition, which is our control condition. And in the functional analysis video, if you guys remember, what happens is each of these conditions are presented once in a random order. So how this template is set up is each condition um, is a column, and then each row is a session number. So for your first five sessions, you're going to be presenting each of these conditions once. And it's going to be in a random order. So you guys can, um, I don't know, when I used to do it, I would um, take five pieces of paper and write attention on one, demand on one, alone on another, and so on, and crumple them up and shake them up and then draw them out of a hat. And that's how I would randomize it. But um, so, for instance, so say session one, our first condition, and I'm just going to make this up, <laughs> maybe it's demand. So you run the demand condition, and little Kira only engages in the problem behavior once. Then you're going to go to the next row. This is going to be your second session, and say the next condition was attention, and say she engages in the problem behavior six times. And then for the third session, maybe this was our control session, which was play. So maybe she doesn't engage in the behavior at all. And then fourth condition, maybe it was the alone, and she engages in the problem behavior once. And then in the tangible condition, say she engages in the problem behavior two times. Okay, so now we have five sessions, and each one of these conditions was randomly presented once. You're going to do, and if you look at your graph here, you're going to see all of your data points. Okay, so now you're going to randomly present each condition again. So now sessions 6 through 10, you're going to take those pieces of paper, shake them up again, draw them from a hat, and randomize your conditions. So now say, and I'm just making this up, maybe our first condition was the play condition, and she did not emit problem behavior. Maybe second, we had the attention condition. Maybe she engaged in the problem behavior eight times. And then maybe we had the alone condition and she didn't engage in the problem behavior. Maybe after that, random through the randomization, um, the tangible condition came up and maybe she didn't engage in the problem behavior. And then the demand condition would be last, it's the last one left. And maybe she engaged in the problem behavior zero times. Okay, so now we do that whole thing again. And you guys can see over here on the graph, the data paths are starting to connect for each condition. And that's why you separate your conditions into columns. If you put everything on the same column, it's going to connect every single one of your data paths together and make a straight, <laughs> make one data path between all your data points. You don't want that. You want data paths connected connecting the data points of each condition, not across all your conditions. So, okay, um, sessions 11 through 15. So say, I don't know, we did the loan condition first, and she engages in the problem behavior zero times. And then maybe attention. Or, yeah, and she engages in it seven times. And then maybe demand. So she might engage in the demand condition, engage in the problem behavior in the demand condition once. In the 14th session, maybe we did um, play and zero instances. 
And then maybe in the tangible condition, she had one instance of problem behavior. And then our last round, um, say for example, we had the alone condition. Oh, let's do um, tangible condition first. And say she engaged in the problem behavior once. And then maybe we had the uh, demand condition. And she engaged in it maybe twice. And then we had the alone condition. She maybe engaged the problem behavior once. And then maybe we had the attention condition. She engaged in the problem behavior nine times. And then last would be our control condition. And maybe she engaged in the problem behavior once. So there's your graph of your functional analysis. And you might have to move this participant um, name out here so that you can actually see all of your data. And so if we had these data from our functional analyses and we were going to interpret them, remember, you're always comparing each the data path from each condition to the control condition or our play condition. And we can see that the only one that really separates from our play condition is our... Um, our attention condition, which is up here. And then you would typically want to have a legend that says um, what each data, so the each data point represents. So the square, it looks like the triangle is our attention. Um, I know the circles right here are play or your control condition. And I know I mentioned this in the video, but I like it when people graph and they do this. I like it when they put the control condition and um, they represent it different, they have a different visual representation for the control condition. So for this one, the control condition or the play condition is the only one in which the data points are filled in. Everything else, the data points are open. So you can barely, very clearly see your data points for your control condition. And you guys can get around here. So for your data on your project, your BIT project, um, you guys are making up data, so you're going to have to essentially kind of make up a function of the problem behavior. And so I'm looking for your data to fit your function. So if you've determined, if you are saying that the function of the problem behavior is demand, then whenever you go in here and you put data in your demand conditions, then your demand conditions should be high. Um, so you might have eight there, nine there, um, 10 there, and then your attention conditions might be low. And so you can kind of use this template and enter in your data and make the graph look how you want it to. And since your project is made up data, I'm looking to make sure that everything is consistent within your project. So like I mentioned earlier, if your function is escape, then the escape condition should be way up here. If the function is a tangible function, then this tangible column should have high numbers of problem behavior and it should clearly separate from your control condition. So that gives you guys just a little template on um, how to graph functional analyses in Excel. And on a side note, this type of graph is, if you guys think back to our single subject designs uh, module, this is going to be your alternating treatments or multi-element design. And so if you guys ever have um, multiple treatments that you want to compare, you would use that alternating treatments graph and you can actually use this template. So you might not have as many columns, but you could take away three of these columns and use this template and compare two different instructional strategies, for example. Also, along that same note, depending upon your project and how you want to conduct your functional analysis, you may not use these traditional conditions. And I talked about this in the functional analysis video. Um, I have these on here because they are the traditional conditions, but depending upon your data and how you have your project, you may have ruled out that the function is escape. So you may not need a demand condition. Um, you may want to have, you know, you may be trying to decide is the problem behavior, you may know it's the function of attention, but you may want to know in the school setting, is it attention from the teachers or attention from peers? So you might have a condition 
for attention from teachers, and then instead of demand, you might have attention from peers, and then you might have the loan condition and a tangible, and then your control condition. Or you may have ruled out that um, the function is escape and sensory, so you can take out the demand and the loan conditions. It's just depending upon you and have your how you have your data up, set up and how you created your situation. So I hope this helps. Um, please let me know if you guys have any questions as you're going through your project or when you're playing around with this template. So, all right, guys. Thanks for listening.